G'day viewers, this is Troy from Troy's Visual Arts Channel. In my previous video I presented my successfully developed 1945 expired Kodak Kodakolor 120 film which I got blue looking negatives. Well, um, I've got three more vintage Kodakolor films um, of near similar vintage. Uh, these are all from the early 1950s. This one's a 620 that expired in October 1953 and these two here are um, 120 type which both expired in March 1954. Well, anyway um, yeah I've um, shot all three of them and I ex when I um, developed them I, I was expecting a uh, similar good results but unfortunately it wasn't the case. Of, of these three films I shot, only one roll was successful. I'll tell you why. Firstly, um, this this one here, I I shot this in my brownie, and um, I didn't realise I didn't I had the brownie um, set on standard shutter speed instead of bulb exposure. The whole time I thought it was on bulb exposure, and I was doing four second exposures at at its uh, fixed f11 shutter. Sorry, not shutter. Um, aperture and so hence yeah got bugger all exposure and and um yeah got no pictures at all when developing so basically yeah these these films i pretty much um developed 20 uh, minutes color developer blicks eight minutes and uh stabilized for a minute and a half and the first one i got nothing but a clear amber base not even a hint of a picture. That was all due to the uh, exposure issue of my brownie camera. So yeah, these films, um, with old film of this vintage, you really need to pretty much expose the hell out of them to make them work quite nicely. <laughs> so yeah, that was dis that was very disappointing. Now my second film, I developed, I um shot it properly um, I shot it at, in general at one uh, second uh, shutter speed and and uh, six point three aperture in sunny well in sunny weather um, and in cloudier weather I shot it uh, at uh, wider apertures and I developed it the same way and once again I got practically a clear amber base but with very 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 faded pictures and um, I can barely see anything to the naked eye and it's been hard to show we've caught up like this but anyways um, there, there is um, some very faded pictures there and I'm on on um, scanning them I using my crude method of an overhead projector and my mobile phone camera I was able to get some very faded pictures which look better in black and white than in colour <laughs> but yeah that was also a very disappointing develop and so this got me very perplexed I wonder what the hell's going on here I was successful with my 1945 expired coat of colour but was very unsuccessful with early 50s coat of colour obviously yeah Kodak has um, changed their coat of colour type processes um, between 1942 and 1956 they had like three generations of coat of color before um, before they introduced the c22 process um, to the public for for um, home amateur uh, developing and uh, for for um, for your um, your photographic stores to de develop the film um, or chemists or whatever um, so yeah basically um, yeah they had they went for a few generations of uh, of different processes and yeah for this for their early 50s process um, it was totally different to that of their uh, mid late 40s process anyway um, I did some in, I did some uh, investigating by doing some 
um, on my third roll doing some test exposures and cutting them off in the dark and cutting them into quarters and doing test develops on each and I did various different develops. I did a hybrid of, of CAF and I'll see black and white develop and color develop. I've done black and white develop which which um, worked very nicely in producing a black and white negative um, um, on 12 minutes developing um, you know, as a black and white negative the the negatives were quite dark so I rolled back the developing time to six minutes which worked quite nicely so this is actually a rapid developing type film um, so yeah um, and on the hybrid develops um, I using the well, with the black and white develop I used the standard Ilford rapid fixer which yeah it worked but um, when I did the hybrid black and white color develops and using uh, blicks um, yeah, I once again got a practically amber clear base, and so I figured, hmm, could the Blix be what's ruining the film? So, yeah, um, so next I tried doing a colour develop, six minutes, uh, five minutes colour develop, and, uh, and five minutes in just standard Ilford Rapid Fixer, and that fixed the problem. Basically, after that, I actually got a got proper um, contrasty images with some faint colour in them, which is fantastic news. So yeah, I finally got it figured out. So yeah, I finally found a way to develop early fifties coat colour in C forty one. So yeah, it's basically you develop in. You develop for five minutes in in a color developer of the C41 kit. Then you, know, you wash and you don't blix it, because that's what ruins these films. You put it in standard Ilford Rapid Fixer or anything, any similar um, standard fixer you use for black and white film. And you stabilize, you of course use a stabilizer at the end um, and you wash in between obviously so yeah five minutes color developer five minutes fix a minute and a half stabilize and you'll get decent contrasty faint color negatives anyway I've uh, fully developed the color film and here it is I'm gonna First, um, get the light up so you can see it. There's, yeah, there's a lot of ref uh, light reflection and glare, but um, as you can see here, um, you can see there is easily recognisable pictures. Still a bit faded. They're not like real impacty, but they're there and they're they'll be easily scannable and will yield a decent looking picture. And um, there is colour in them as well because I've done on my test develop. Um, I, I I did some test developing of some really colourful objects, and I um, after successfully developing, I put it over my overhead and projector and took a snapshot with this here phone camera and I um, inverted it and um, auto color corrected it in and tone corrected it in Photoshop and I got some distinct colors but anyway the uh, pictures are there and I am really really stoked going to raise this lamp so I can see the rest of the the uh, film negative. <laughs> so anyway, I've took this, uh, I've snapped this film out around um, Wollongong and Yinadera. Starting from the top, um, there's not enough light going there, but actually I might put my light box on to show you um so starting from from the top there um that's a shot of my chili or mum's chili plants uh you can sort of barely notice something there <laughs> but 
But anyways, um, going down, I took a shot. I took a shot of the uh, Hungry Jacks sign, which I thought, yeah, had some impacty colours, and I figured that would look good on vintage colour film. And this is a shot of a uh, Wollongong train station with a uh, stationary train. And uh, this shot here is of, uh, I believe, yeah, this is a selfie shot, a selfie shot of um, of me in at uh, Wollongong Park. Um, and behind me is the Bay Repairs building, which had really impacty colours, and I figured that would be good to test the film with. And here is some uh, graffiti art. Figured that would uh, really test the co um, film's colour capability. I can sort of see a bit of colour in it. As mentioned, the colour is very, very faint. It's not like, you know, really rich or anything. But then again, you know, you, you can't expect uh, perfect results with cross-processing in modern um, chemistry when it was used in when the actual chemistry used for this film is totally different but I'm very grateful for the results that I've got here I mean these negatives look very nice and will make great pictures once um, scanned but anyway so yeah that's the graffiti um, at uh, Wollongong near Wollongong Youth Centre um, this is a shot of a uh, of of the old lighthouse at Billmore Basin Boat Harbour. That's a shot of the uh, of of the lighthouse on Flagstaff Hill, Wollongong Lighthouse. Try and move it out of the way um, from that bloody light over there. Uh, it's just a bit hard to show. Yeah, I'm having a bit of a hard time trying to show this film given the circumstances, so bear with me. And this camera pretty much practically never wants to focus, which is a bit of a drag. Anyway, yep, that's Wollongong Lighthouse. And uh, going down further, that's... Um, trying to think what, what exposure that one is. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's a view of uh, South Beach from uh, Flagstaff Hill. Wollongong South Beach. Wish I could get this to focus properly. As you can see in my previous videos, I consistently have a hard time getting this bloody phone camera to focus properly with my when showing my negatives. Anyway, this is uh, the Nan Tan Temple in Yandera. Did a few exposures of, the, of that and its pagoda. And finally, here's a selfie shot of me next to my car, which of course is not a complete shot because when I was doing my test develops, which I um, in the dark cut the film off, um, I cut it up a bit too far and whacked the sticky tape on and yeah, I can only get a partial shot here, which is not good, but I can crop it and neaten it up and everything and make it look more presentable when it's scanned. But the yeah, the contrast of this image looks very good. I'm really happy with the contrast of it. Anyway, that's my 1954 expired coat of colour film successfully developed. And hopefully uh, once scanned it will get some real distinct colours in it. I'm actually going to be going up to uh, Just Photos 
in Mortdale tomorrow to have them pro have my color films professionally scanned because when I when I um, scan it with my mobile phone camera um, and over a projector the the uh, the uh, JPEGs have lots of artifacts in them, which is undesirable when I want to ramp up the saturation of the colours, which is I don't like, which I don't like the uh, results pretty much. <laughs> so I'm going to have them professionally scanned and colour corrected, and hopefully we'll I'll be able to do a lot more to bring out better colour in my vintage colour films that I've that I've successfully shot and developed. Anyway. Going to wrap up the video very shortly. So yeah, free coat of colour films use one one film quite successful. Now just a bit about these coat of colour films in general. Um, yeah, I've got the instruction manuals here um, of how to shoot with them. Um, back in the day when they're brand new, you you generally uh, with one fiftieth shutter speed you shoot the film at f16 in sunny weather and um, f11 in, in a hazy sun well obviously uh, as over time the film loses sensitivity as it ages which I've I've learnt um, a little while ago which is how I sort of um, know how to successfully shoot old film basically yeah the main um, thing with old film is over time it gets desensitized and you have to increase the amount of exposure or the exposure time or both in, in order to make it work and perform this as good as it performed back in the day so yeah with these coda color films instead of shooting at 150 for second at f16 i shot them at one second at f6.3 and with 945 cater color, I think I shot that one at f5.6 at one second. Anyway, yeah, that works. That worked quite nicely in making these films sensitive enough to to capture the pictures, which is good. Anyway, um, so yeah, there's not really much more to say. Um, but yeah, I'm happy I finally cracked cracked it with the developing method for developing the early 50s era Kodak Kodak Color film. Hope you enjoyed this video, even though it was pretty well long-winded. I've um, got one more early 50s Kodak Color film that I'm going to um, shoot. I think I might shoot it tomorrow. It's a 116 type, and I'm going to shoot it in my in my uh, Kodak Hawkeye 116 camera. And I'm going to make very large six centimeter by 6.5 centimeter by 11 centimeter color pictures on it. That's going to look really cool. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do um, probably tomorrow when I'm up in Sydney. Anyway, better wrap up this video. Hope you enjoyed it. This is Troy from Troy's Digital Arts Channel, signing out.